The ancient Greeks had the idea that the earth was composed of four elements. We know better now, but 2,000 years ago it was considered to be fire, air, earth, and water. I wonder what they would have thought when we, later on as a civilization, combined them into something called a steam engine. My dad was a railroader. He was very proud of his work uh, and loved the era of the steam engine. He loved what he did and it was just clear from the way he told stories. But my father told so many stories of his life, uh, his working life, that later on, uh, after his death, I met a man who had a, taken a photograph of him sitting on the side rods here at Golden, B.C. in 1949. That's the guy, Ernie Otterwell, that took the photograph, and that's how he looked at that time. And this guy is the brakeman. And I wasn't even a twinkle in my father's eye at that time, but uh, I, I so wanted to be part of a crew with him that uh, I had this made up as a memory for that time, and it's one of my most cherished possessions. Gordon and I lived in the same town, went to the same school, and met one another, according to him, in grade three, although my memory isn't as good as his. We had an HO gauge railway layout in our basement on a big sheet of plywood, so we were building plaster of Paris mountains and bridges and fake forests and, and all that you can do when you build in miniature. He grew up in a railroading family. His dad was a conductor. We liked the outdoors, we liked walking the tracks around Revelstoke. He was a steam engineer and a millwright, much more hands-on than myself. So somehow that was a mutual interest. Uh, as you get older, of course, all that slips by, but uh, we still enjoyed uh, history and railroading history. And that brought us together in Nevada eventually, where I learned that there was an opportunity to actually operate a locomotive, a live locomotive, which is a rare thing in the world, really. I'd never heard of it until a friend found this on the internet, the miracle of the modern age, uh, that, that there was still an, an industrial museum that did this. It's like stepping back in time, you know? It's like an old West movie set in, in many of these little towns, and this one in particular, because they've effort, made effort to save the railway, uh, which was turned over to the town when the mine closed. So where else in the world could you do that? You're on original track. And the, the locomotive itself, number 40, dates from 1910. This is locomotive number 40. It's a uh, ten-wheeler, and this is the locomotive that will be operating tomorrow morning. So right now it's just sitting in the engine shed, stone cold, but tomorrow morning they'll uh, light her off and uh, build up steam pressure so we can head down the tracks. It takes up to six, to maybe even eight hours, depending on the locomotive to raise steam pressure in order for it to be able to move itself. So we came down in the morning, the crew had beaten us in, even at 6 a.m., and uh, they had a fire going. We could see smoke rising from the roof. Meanwhile, this, the engine is expanding, the pressures are building, uh, it's, it's, it's making sounds. There's systems like the air pressure system now, it kicks in. What's our steam pressure up to, Gordy? About about uh, 65 pounds. Okay, and what are we going to? Running it, operating at 175 psi. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we got a few hours yet. How's it feeling so far? Well, it's feeling pretty good. I <clears throat> I ran, fired a couple of shovelfuls of coal in here to keep the fire going nicely and uh, it's nice and warm. It's a chilly morning but it feels good up in the cab, that's for sure. The, the steam is considered the breath of the locomotive. It is a living being and you have to be in tune with it. It's lumbering, it, in many ways it's, it's crude, it's heavy. It's somehow people get uh, 
an emotional experience out of it, and that's what we went to Nevada for. We got it all. Gordon has much more technical kind of knowledge and experience, so he knows what he's doing. So when he gets around the locomotive, he knows and can identify the part and what it does, and whereas for me, it's just a maze of moving machinery. Our firemen had a sense of history. Uh, you know, everybody dresses in overalls because it's a very practical thing to keep your clothes clean. This guy wore a bowler uh, hat, a derby, which was something that was typical in, let's say, the 1800s. So he had a sense of tradition with the supervision of a, another qualified engineer, you can be in the seat and operate the controls and do what our fathers did before us. Now Gordon was disappointed because he couldn't do the, the fireman's job. He did get to fire a couple of shovelfuls in, guess while the engine was still in the shop, when it's less critical. Uh, so he met with some satisfaction there. What an experience to put your hand on the throttle, so to speak, ring the bell, blow the whistle, fire the coal. This is the story of that adventure, each of us taking the throttle and running up a 2.5% grade through tunnels um, and having the time of our life. It was a, a lifelong ambition for us both, uh, one that we never thought we would fulfill. Just to have that visceral experience, the real hands-on, now I know what my father felt uh, and couldn't express. Now I've, I've done it too. And I'm just going, yeah, that's a dream come true.